How do you find great SaaS ideas worth pursuing? This took me almost a decade to figure out with lots of iteration. I've discovered that there are few factors that if you prioritize properly, you have a 99% higher chance of succeeding with your SaaS than if you don't focus on these parameters. What you're going to watch right now is a small segment from the coaching program which I conduct called the Founders Club. I really hope you enjoy it. I, I want to give a precursor to this, okay? Um, from a very young age, like, uh, not very young age, I mean, from the, from the very beginning of my work on product, I've always tried to think in frameworks, you know? And it's taken me close to 10 years to figure out a definition that I can not only use for myself, that I can use as a North Star, that can help me evaluate whether an idea that's coming along is good or bad. And uh, I say that because this definition, which I'm going to show you in just a second, has gone through at least 15, 16 iterations. Okay. So it's not something that just, you know, I pulled out of my hat. And the reason I say that is I want you to pay attention to that definition a little bit. Okay. And see what you're able to pull out from that. I'll, I'll probably, I, I, I will explain all of the different parts of it. But I want you to take a look at what I define as a good idea, okay? And this is something I've learned by working with teams, working with solutions and seeing them fail, seeing which ones actually make money. And I figured out that, hey, the ones that actually make money do these three things consistently. So a great SaaS idea is one that solves a recurring problem for rich people in delightful ways okay uh have you seen this definition anywhere before probably not no i have not seen but yes part of it i totally agree and that that recurring problem is something which i have seen in at least other places or i i or at least i totally agree with but then the one which caught my eye is the rich people so <laughs> correct okay so uh, you know, now obviously we'll need to get into the details of these three things. Okay. What do I mean when I say recurring? Why do I say that? What do I mean when I say rich people? Why do I say that? And what do I mean when I say delightful? Delight. And why do I say that? Okay. So let's okay. start with recurring. Okay. Um, you tell me which of these two would, would you choose to build an app around? Or, you know, simply from a profit perspective. Option A, a software that writes resumes or option B, a software that automates daily social media posting. Mm, I would choose B. B? Okay. Why? Let's say you're targeting creators or um, I mean, that is the audience. Then this problem of, uh, or I won't say problem, but as such, but yes, there is a need to actually think about something on what to post on a daily basis and then mm -hmm. that word daily there is actually really it, it, i mean it, it gets really difficult when you want to do the same thing again and again and again and again and again uh, so that is a really uh, i mean if there is something or a tool that can solve that problem then then definitely yes and but if you see option a i mean yes there is definitely a need for that in the market people want to write good resumes etc but for the same person or the people I, I mean, I'll try for a free tool and then just move away yeah. uh, when my need is done. Yeah. So you're right. You know, if you want to make money, you should go with option B. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll tell you a little story. Back in 2019 or 20, I don't remember exactly. It was one of my friends decided to start a consulting company where he would help uh, people uh, rewrite their resumes and this was before the AI boom and so six months down the line he's still not breaking even you know he's not able to make enough money to replace his old job he's not making enough money to see this as a career or make I mean go full-time into this so then you know we were having a conversation and he said Pramod I think I have to pivot you know what I what we noticed was number one People don't need a resume every month, right? He right. needs a salary every month, but people don't need a resume every month. Right. They need a resume once every two years, maybe right. three years, okay? So you can't sell your audiences again and again on your service after you've done something for them once, okay? 
and this story does not end there i'll tell you the rest of the story when we get to the next point okay, <laughs> okay. so if you are thinking about you know an idea worth solving always think of a problem that is recurring and here's why i say that you know in the industry you've probably heard everyone say solve heart problems solve heart problems don't solve an itch solve problems which need surgical solutions because that's where people pay a lot of money right. and for me at least i have found that uh, you know the uh, that recommendation or that advice to be pretty vague why because what's hard for me is not hard for many people okay so what right. i think is hard what somebody may say as hard is not actually hard okay but if you if you turn that phrasing around a little bit okay and say look for recurring tasks or look for recurring problem you are you've got much more clarity and you've got much more better direction as to what is the problem you are looking for because recurring tasks okay is where frustration happens recurring tasks is where people start looking for solution they become problem aware they look they say you know you can only lead a horse to water you can't make it drink it drink okay it's the same thing with people looking for and buying software recurring problems is where i have observed like i said frustrations happen people start looking for problems and when they find a problem they're like damn it take my money Okay so why do i say you know recurring problems are where the you know the frustrations happen people are willing to pay is because if you understand this one concept anand you will be further than most product people i know that mm -hmm. at its core saas is basically an automation okay and why do i say this because a lot of people are trying to build saas for everything and that's why saas is failing if your person in your company is not productive let's build a saas let's add another point of friction to his already unproductive day okay if <laughs> so i've seen this happen i've got so many stories I've, i i had a story that i wanted to tell you just before for the previous slide but let me start with this one i remember in 2022 uh, a ceo of a company reached out to me and they said uh, my my people are not as productive as i would they want them to be because they're all working from home right so i i wanted to create a software that can uh, you know where they can log in their time and then you can they have their tasks and all of that i said uh, okay you want to give me money great let me look into the problem for you okay and so we started looking we started digging i i i when i spoke to these people i asked them you know what's the issue and all of the reasons they gave me for them not being able to perform at their best had to do with the ceo being a hard ass being a micromanager you know uh, that is not a problem you solve with saas right uh, so i've seen that in the industry people are trying to build saas for everything and one of the ways to get around that kind of thinking is to think of saas as an automation Okay the best SaaS that I have seen that make a lot of money Moolah is yeah. are basically just automation the more you complicate it the more friction you add to it the more you end up building things that nobody wants for 8 months to 10 months and then you go to market and it doesn't sell okay you keep right. SaaS simple it's basically an automation that's why I say the reason the secret to choosing the wrong idea is choosing problems that are not recurring if you think of all these different parts of why saas works why it doesn't work what makes money i was able to boil it down to this one little thing okay like this is years of me looking at different things talking to different people validating i i'm not looking at effort i'm looking at results okay i'm not looking at what people say that they like what they don't like i for example there are many products that people like but as soon as you ask them to pay money they won't pay money right okay uh for ex like whatsapp okay in there was a time back in 2015 whatsapp was trying to get people to pay for it Right. Okay. As right. soon as they did that, people started. That was when Telegram came out. That was when many other solutions came out. We can give it for free. So personally, the answer to you know making money online or finding a good idea worth building comes down to recurring problems. Okay. So mm -hmm. what I did also 
this was part of the research that I did. Okay, so I created a table looking at companies solving recurring problems versus non-recurring problems. Okay, mm -hmm. so on the top, these are a bunch of the best which I could find companies that were solving non-recurring problems. Okay, and at the bottom are a bunch of companies solving recurring problems. I won't, you know, I don't expect you to go through all of this right now but let me give you the gist okay at the top you have companies which solve non-recurring problem the best of them kind of earn in the millions okay so 725 million 100 million and all of that but you look downstairs problem i mean companies that solve recurring problems they are consistently in the billions yes. and i think you would probably understand the difference between a million and a billion okay yep. they're, yep. <laughs> they're like like way, huge way yeah, different right, okay like right. we don't we don't we don't understand that scale but there's a huge difference between billions and millions okay and and the reason i say that these are the best of the best companies solving which i was able to find which solved non recurring problems now you'll see here that turbotax okay this is the only one in this list which earns in a billion, billion range mm -hmm. but but you'll notice something very important this is again not a non-recurring problem this is a annually recurring problem or something of a low recurring problem you would say so even solving a low recurring problem the right way okay which we'll talk about for for rich people in delightful ways we'll talk about can get you far okay, okay. but how far i'll this is turbo tax is part of into its tax segment revenue okay if you go down QuickBooks is also part of Intuit's business, mm -hmm. but it's a continuous small business accounting and payroll management. But look at their revenue, 12.7 billion. billion, beats this guy out of the water any day. Right. Okay, okay so I want you to remember every un other billion, okay, like 1 billion, 2 billion is already <laughs> magnitudes ahead. So the difference between 3.6 and 12.7 is a lot of money. Okay. Right. Just because they're in billions, I don't want anybody to get confused. Okay. All right. So this is this is why I personally recommend all of my students. Okay. Stop looking for hard problems. Stop confusing yourself with so many different aspects of what a good idea should be, and try focusing on something very simple. Keep it simple, silly. You know, keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. Right. Keep it simple. Keep it straightforward. Look for recurring problems you do that it solves for many of the other things that you're looking for in 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 the you know in the validation of a good idea itself mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. now let's look at the next real you know that the criteria we had or rule that i would say that comes into the definition rich people you know um this is something we don't often think about and i didn't use i i i didn't think about it this way either until i started working with rich people and i realized damn it why didn't i start doing this earlier okay so i don't know if you know uh about this story so elon musk when he launched his first uh tesla vehicle it was called the roadster mm -hmm. are you familiar with the roadster by any chance yeah it's a few tesla models yeah yeah so uh, this was at the beginning this was around 2005 or 2000 between 2005 and 2008 when uh, uh, elon musk was uh, acquired tesla tesla was an independent company he wanted to build electric vehicles actually he wanted to build electric autonomous vehicles people don't realize that what he's building is autonomous vehicles people are following in his footsteps building electric vehicles but he's building a fleet of robotic vehicles okay right. that's what his goal is people forget that okay so he wanted to build that company and he needed a lot of capital to get started okay so how did he do that well he created a prototype model called the roadster okay which was an electric vehicle it was a delightful brand new solution in the market and he sold that car for a hundred thousand dollars Okay, and no one had heard about an electric car. We don't know how good it is, how what guarantees it has, how long it will last, will the battery explode, none of that. Okay, so he sold it at a hundred thousand dollars. He and he was not selling it to normal common people. Mm -hmm. The average price of a car was around forty-eight thousand. So what he did was he focused on rich people who were who were happy to buy things who had a lot of money, disposable income, put into his business to start 
building out his company and all of those things okay so the reason i say that is because when you're building your saas okay look for problems that or recurring tasks or issues that rich people have they've got a problem okay and they they want to solve it and they're willing to pay you why would you focus all of your time and energy which you have a limited amount okay you have like 24 hours then you sleep eight then you spend time with family for and you probably have around 7 to 8 hours to focus on your business but building a business requires more than 8 hours so why would you use that those limited valuable hours to build for people whom you need to convince that they have a problem and they have to pay you okay rich people got to this position of being rich by understanding that they pay for solutions that they have they need time leverage that that time is more important than money so they're willing to pay you so go take their money is what i've realized okay so solve okay. problems for rich people you will again be you know further ahead of most people who are trying to sell you know like combs for to poor people on the street no sell a diamond studded you know bracelet or sell a you know something luxury item to an ambani or something in in half the time for half the effort you would have made 100x of the revenue okay so my recommendation to all of my students in the you know in the cohort is again try and find rich people and solve for their problems okay cool uh now finally oh where did we go okay finally delightful, delightful ways okay what does this mean Well, there are two ways to think of what I mean when I say solve problems in delightful ways. Okay, the first one is think of a fun solution to a common problem or the problem, not common, but the problem that they have. So, for example, when I built Evalo, okay, mm -hmm. what was the problem? Lead generation problem. Okay, what do most people solve? lead generation they think of ads let's go put throw more money at ads and if you've ever done ads uh, anant you'll know that there's only so much money you can throw at ads before which everything plateaus okay because people get sick of seeing your face or you know you need to keep throwing so much money at it to get attention in this in this noisy area so i asked myself okay uh, what is an alternative way or a fun way for me to help businesses get leads okay and so i came across this concept of quizzes or evaluation so you've probably seen many of these quizzes online which disney character are you you know or which friends character are you you take the quiz and then you know do you like this or do you like that or do you like this color or whatever and then finally they say oh you are this character you know i was thinking that's not a bad way of collecting data you know mm -hmm. uh, so if i created a quiz how good of a product manager are you okay and i gave it to anant so anant would give me data like this my name is anant this is my email id but that's just the first two things okay right. like this is how many years of experience i have this is what i like this is what i don't like this is what i'm good at this is what i'm not good at this is what i want to be these are my ambitions and i was like Wait a minute. That's not just a great way to collect data. It's a fun way to collect data, because at the end of the you know the the survey, Anant leaves with a, so so what Evalu does FYI is you take an evaluation and it gives you an a feedback like okay Anant you uh, your skills in agile is you know 70% out of 100 your skills in product development is 50% out of 100 your skills in you know testing is 40% out of 100 your skills in uh, relationship or uh, customer engagement is something something so what happens for you is you've got a great deal like you're putting in some information and you are getting feedback about where you stand on each of these different categories but i am getting information about you as to where you stand on each of these categories now if i have a product that i want to share with you i can say that okay take pull out only all the people who you know answered x to this question and then go and talk to them hey anand you know i noticed that you you know you have a challenge with customer engagement you scored low you know do you want to learn more about this because i've got something that i want to sell you okay now that is a fun way of solving a really important 
recurring problem for businesses so i uh, so i think this is something you will realize you know as a director of product everything is downstream of lead generation no new leads right. no new business okay so right. ha- every business has this problem and all rich people have this problem okay so i looked at what rich i actually started with you know some of w- w- what these rich people were struggling with because every time they call me into consulting one of the problems they tell me is uh, we need to get more leads we need to do email marketing and all that I'm like okay the rich people are having this problem let me try to solve it so a recurring problem for rich people solved in a delightful way, way. okay but that's not the only delightful way so this is the f- so the, i said there are two ways that your problems your solutions need to be delightful okay mm-hmm. one is obviously how do you make it fun okay how do you make it fun so this is why uh you know have you heard of wordle yeah the game, uh, the game. I, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. uh it made lead generation for new york times fun millions of people came in there you know uh, and started playing on their this thing and uh, uh, the new york times were then able to retarget those people and and saved a lot of money on tar- on ads because now you can target like targeting is the holy grail in ads okay like if i right. can if i can show my ad exactly to anand then i don't pay so much money to show it to all these other people who won't buy my stuff okay because Correct. every view counts okay counts, right. so always think of you look at <clears throat> this is something that again i've seen so many examples which is why I, i'm i'm not going into the details because i mean th- th- we won't have the time for all of that but the the simple answer is try to make it fun what is a fun way to make a problem or solve a problem okay? okay so that's something you need to focus on okay then obviously the other aspect of making something delightful is basically the ui and ux ux okay, okay. Uh, yep. there is this thing in psychology called the halo effect okay what that means is that uh if they if somebody looks at somebody or something and something catches their eye okay then they assume that every other part of this person's character or attitude or this product's features or pricing is also good and honest and decent and you know trustworthy trustworthy yeah okay so i have noticed this happen over and over again that i could no longer ignore this that how a simple ui design a minimalistic or you know you, you, i'll talk about how to find good ui designs in a, one of the future classes okay but mm-hmm. how something as simple as good ui can help people form positive associations with your product and your person as a you know as a as a founder and say i want to use this more and i will continue using this for a long time okay so now let's quickly recap we saw three things recurring tasks rich people solving for rich people and solving for delightful problems now i been speaking about this i don't know if you were able to catch it there are a few secret benefits okay for each of these ways or rules of building products that i think would make a good product mm-hmm. and uh, so i wanted to brainstorm with you okay i wanted to ask you what do you think is the secret benefit of solving a recurring task i i kind of alluded to it just one or two seconds back can you guess I mean, we don't have to go convincing people uh, uh, about the correct product or solution uh, because you you know that that problem exists for for a set of people and definitely and they're frustrated works. and so their problem problem aware, their problem right. aware, pro- being problem aware is a big deal huh? i'm telling you because otherwise you have to convince people that they have a problem don't ever get into that trap correct that they're, is one thing uh, any any other uh, benefits that you see let me give you an example Uh-huh. what is a metric that people check when it comes to saas that you think solving recurring problems will resolve stickiness uh, stickiness churn churn rate yeah if people leaving and then yeah yeah okay when so, you solve high frequency task problems mm-hmm. your churn rate is very very low okay right. people don't realize this 
because you know it's one thing to get a person through the door it's another thing to keep them there right okay because today uh there is i mean so many things are vying for their attention right but if you can build a solution that solves recurring problems in delightful ways the stickiness is inbuilt okay okay so instead okay. so that's why i said it took me a long time to create that definition in it by itself there are a lot of answers to all of the other major problems that sas has okay and one of those things is stickiness so recurring problems solve the problem of stickiness or in other words churn okay, okay. so that's not just the only one if you think about it there are many more but i want to touch upon the top ones for the other two as well just to make sure we are you know on time okay, okay. Uh, what do you think is a secret benefit of building for rich people uh you get the right valuation for the product or mm, the right amount of payment uh, i mean uh, because otherwise pricing and valuing the product that becomes in a problem in itself correct. if you're selling to new new crowd or new people correct you know, uh you're right so like i told you that story you know uh, rich people know what they want you get a better quality of clients so the guy who gives you 500 dollars okay is always nagging you like is it ready do this can you change this can you do that the guy who paid me 5000 dollars okay uh is like can you do this in 6 months this is what i want these are my parameters great done you know right much much higher quality of clients client this is why i said i want to make sure that you guys end up building products you don't hate businesses that you don't get kicked out of <laughs> you know right. uh, so you're putting all this effort why don't you love the product if if you end up building something you hate might as well go do a day job right right so this solves for that problem but not only that the, there's a secret benefit here that you build a network of high net worth individuals okay that's nice okay before all of my friends were employees like even their thinking was like what will my when will my appraisal come what percentage do i get and you know they say right your income or your personality is the average of the five people you hang out with yeah yes better your average yes okay, better your <laughs> average okay so that's one secret benefit that i've seen there more opportunities just come to you you know like you just keep attracting more opportunities all right so finally what is the secret benefit of building fun solutions what do you think is the secret benefit of building fun solutions mm, maybe you stand out from the rest if if at all you are in a competitive market okay yeah I mean, you're fair okay what happens when you when you find a new solution and it's fun what do you do okay word of mouth benefit i correct. mean you refer it to somebody else correct uh, and then they bring more clients exactly uh, exactly you know how powerful word of mouth is i never realized this anand but and this is something i realized that people like if if somebody who knows somebody tells them somebody right that means their guards are down they're like okay let me go check it out you know and right. it's so powerful and what the, the, but that that's not that's not the only real secret the real secret benefit is your cost of acquisition goes down tremendously tremendously okay right. when you build fund solutions your cost of acquisition goes down tremendously you don't have to spend on ads your marketing costs go down because people are talking about this hey have you heard of this do, do, do look at this look at this look at this this is fun i love this then they will share you so how evalo grew without me having to do any kind of um you know marketing is people love to create evaluations and they'll share it with their friends hey i created this evaluation <laughs> go check it out then their friends will take that evaluation they'll say oh made by evalu let me click on that then they will go they will create an account then they will build then they will share with hey i created an evaluation go check it out then they will click on that then they will <laughs> also awesome. okay so that's the power of a fun little tool okay similarly cool. chat gpt that's the reason why it got to 1 million customers in 5 days right Right. why because everyone is talking about it like hey did you see i i i typed this in and it suddenly gave me all of these answers like who oh, really let me also go check okay. <laughs> okay so the real benefit there also is reducing cost of acquisition like you right. said word right. of mouth okay right. so 
a lot of reasons why that definition which I shared with you makes a lot of sense. And uh, the reason why I don't get into the details is because of something called just in case knowledge versus just in time knowledge. These are things that you will realize as you build. Okay. If I tell you right now, it'll probably just sit as information and it'll disappear again. When you come to, you know, the point where you learn that concept, you will have to go through this, you know, the, the, mm. this, this thinking again. So when we come to that, we will cross that bridge. But for oh. now, I just wanted to give you an overview of why the definitions are the right. way it is okay got it got it May one one follow up question yeah, yeah, sec go ahead. Sec second point uh, uh the rich people one right uh see pramod are i mean are you saying that see i have read this before as well is b2b uh SaaS much much better than b2c i mean yeah. because again i see again rich people or a selective crowd or uh, or maybe enterprises which have a problem recurring task no very so, good question very good question in fact that's one of the reasons I said rich people. Okay, because I'll tell you why. So I just and, and what I've realized is there is no such thing as B2B and B2C when it comes to selling because you're always selling to the person. Okay, Who makes it? okay, okay, so it's always P2P. If you get into sales, you'll realize this Anand. Okay, okay? that when if you if you if so I was sitting in on a few conversations that sales guys made to the CEO. Mm -hmm. When they were talking to the CEO, you know what kind of conversation they have having? They're saying, hey, CEO, do you know that if you bought this product, it's not value for the company, it's value for you. You know, in two years time, you will have doubled the revenue. You will look like a great guy in front of the others. You will improve your status in society. You will be a great leader. And, you know, that's when I realized that there is no such thing as B2B and B2C. It's, it's again... Uh, a cover to to distract you from the real thing if you if you if you scratch out you know and get a few layers down it's again just rich people right. okay or rich right. people in good positions who can afford uh, so look at people who have already made it in to some position in their lives because right. they didn't get there by by doing things what poor people do okay they didn't get there by doing things what stupid people do they didn't do get there by doing what the 99 percent does. Right. they are already part of the one percent so they understand how things work in the entrepreneurial field okay, okay. okay. so b2b versus b2c uh i used to think along those terms maybe this most of what i'm saying sounds like b2b okay i'll tell you when b2c would make sense and so they they had a project where they were working with high net worth individuals, okay, to manage their wealth in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Now that is B2C. All right. But all of those guys were extremely filthy rich. Okay. So there was a small team, like four people, who were building an app that would show all of these high net worth individuals where all of their assets are stored and how much they're getting. So not this kind of stock markets, market assets, oil, uh, you know, mm -hmm. rental, uh, sheep farming, all of these, these things. So that is okay. B2C. Okay, so they were serving rich people, rich people. in the B2C space, they, they were not businesses per se. Okay, so mm -hmm. um, that's why I kind of, I remembered it now why I kind of, you know, got was, it. Got didn't it. go for a B2C, B2B definition versus when directly for rich people people got it okay um and they were making a lot of money like uh so the way they said it uh, the way they got paid is we will handle all of your portfolio or investments and we keep a percentage they never say salary or they never say numbers they say percentages okay so if you make hundred thousand we keep ten percent that's ten thousand k a month for us right okay? so right. always yeah percentage we'll talk about that a little bit later, later. okay okay, okay. okay. Okay, so now obviously another question that you probably have is, do you need an original idea to win in SaaS? Well, uh, basically, no. No, okay. uh, <laughs> this, this I am convinced. Yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need a, a great idea. And now that you know the secret to building great SaaS ideas, look at ideas in the market and see if you can tweak them to be to solve recurring problems or problems. position them to solve recurring problems or reposition them to solve for rich people or reposition them to be delightful solutions so you can take a swiggy 
okay and then uh, reposition it for because swiggy is already solving a recurring problem reposition it for rich people say you know the rich need this kind of food they need caviar and they need you know this kind of uh, packaging then and they need a person to come home and and serve it on their table or something some whatever <laughs> think right, of what the right. rich rich guys right. want and position it for the rich people okay and then make it delightful like i said maybe have a server come along and serve something so you can take i don't know what's going on here there's supposed to be a um supposed to be a thingy over pie here right? pie okay. chart yeah okay but uh, you'll have to make do with this one so product is only 40% of the you know uh, the the success uh, reasons 60% of it is marketing sales positioning and all of those things okay mm -hmm. and the reason i say that is because i've seen great products sit on shelves and i've seen really idiotic products right. fly off the shelf because a marketing guy was able to sell it okay right. so the reason you know you need to remember this like hold it close to your heart anant is um when you're building products don't you dare forget that the 60% of the effort is in marketing sales branding that's why in the first week itself as soon as we start building your apps which is starting tomorrow we will also start building your brand okay your personal brand because that's so important without that you're going to build something and then going to shout out in the void i have a product i have a product nobody cares okay nobody right. cares but right. if you start building a brand and you say i have an idea i'm doing this people are slowly getting curious you know like what is he building what is he doing what is he doing how will it help me then they'll start thinking when they're sitting on that toilet they'll be like that guy is building something you know maybe i can use it here <laughs> you know and slowly slowly you get into the minds and hearts of people without having to spend money okay so that's what that was this graph so that's why i said you know you do, do you need an original idea to win no thank god you don't need that because you'd be, be spending all of your time and effort trying to validate okay right. you don't want to spend your time validating you want to spend your time making money so let them do all the validation they've got money they've raised vc funding they've spent millions and millions of dollars in validation uh, all of those things you come in and make your money okay so that in summary uh what is a great idea okay i hope i've given you a new perspective anand tell me if i haven't okay but uh, i hope i've given you a new perspective remember that the greatest ideas that you will find and probably you'll discover this along the way but this is what i have discovered over 13 years solving problems making money not making money with companies and businesses all across the world recurring solve recurring tasks for rich people using fun solutions Okay. Awesome. Uh, at least to me, this is great, Pramod. I think at least so far uh, in this session, I think I've got, I mean, lots of lots of new good good information which I, which has excited me. Uh, the other two total circles are totally new to me. Uh, I mean, at least I know that it exists, but then uh, at least it never point, was not the connected. priority, right? Yeah, not connected. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, so let's see what else do we have? Uh, yeah. So uh, this is your homework for today. Uh, mm -hmm. Anand, okay. I want you to go home, and I want you to maybe maybe print this out, or maybe just draw it on a piece of paper or something somewhere. Okay. Okay. So you've got on your uh, uh, vertical axis, you ask these three questions: Is this a recurring task? Do rich people have this problem? Is the solution delightful and fun? Okay. And then every time you get an idea, right? like this is an idea for a saas this is an idea that i want to build whatever you uh, you try and tick these three boxes okay and see where you stand like which idea has the most merit okay and if you come across with you know multiple ideas with all three then come and talk to me i'll tell you why maybe it's not the case okay because there are very okay. few ideas that i have personally seen where it actually ticks all three like what we think rich people have problems okay may actually not be problems for them okay there is a there's a very uh, there's a very good saying i always remember if you have enough money to solve a problem you don't have a problem okay mm -hmm. uh the reason i say that is the way we think of problems is not how rich people think of problems okay so uh this is the point where you'll probably get 
stuck m- most of the time but i'll help you answer that but okay. this is an uh, this is a sheet which i created see and and here's something i i don't like to pat myself on the back okay but it's harder to make something simple it's absolutely easier to make it difficult like right? i can write a i can write a 2000 word essay but making that 2000 word essay a 200 word article that conveys the same information is very very hard okay right. so i i remember once i wrote to my boss uh, i wrote a long letter uh, and i said something like uh, um uh, yeah i'm sorry for the long email but i didn't have the time to make it short okay <laughs> like it, it's 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 what do you say it's counterintuitive like you had time to make write a long email but you didn't have time to make it short <laughs> but that's true it's easier to write a long email it takes lesser time to write a long email you know this is then this but to write a short email you need more time okay so it's right. the same thing with this framework which i've given you it's taken me a long time i'm a little happy with where it is right now i think it can be better because i'm seeing a lot of new things come along but okay. none of it that changes the fundamental aspects of it just more i'm just getting more and more examples more and more ideas of how i would do it <clears throat> but the fundamentals still remain the same right. recurring tasks problems for rich people delightful solution one, yeah, one question here from on this activity right see, see uh, one one, okay. one uh, you you let's take the example of evalo right mm. Bec- see you know that lead generation is a problem and probably lead generation a marketing vp or a, 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 a ceo who runs a marketing agency mm-hmm. um, may may face this problem so you have access to them or probably had access to them and you were able to think of it right okay, okay. so let's say you have a student who is who's not i mean who has some idea on say product and sales and not mm. marketing and who has worked on not i mean is there a way that yes. he can he has he can get a visibility on those problems as well yes. as what i'm asking yes 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 okay now i understand what your question is okay absolutely absolutely <clears throat> it's actually very simple okay uh-huh. and it's called networking Okay. okay um i wish there was a better answer an automated answer a uh, question that you can ask chat gpt but you can't i'm sorry mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the way that i was able to identify these kind of problems worth pursuing or ideas worth pursuing is having a recurring and um, com- constant communication with people i'll tell you why that's important mm mm-hmm. whenever i speak to somebody they will say i have this problem okay if you immediately jump to trying to create a solution for that you will end up creating the wrong solution and right. i've seen this happen many many times in my companies most companies that's what happened the boss goes talks to a client client says i have this problem boss comes back very excited saying we will build this solution we will become a millionaire <laughs> you won't become okay so so many times when i speak to my you speak to these people right first conversation is you know i have this problem second conversation is why third conversation is okay let's look at the underlying issues fourth conversation is wait a minute this is not even a problem you can solve it using this tool or something like that most of the time it gets solved fifth conversation is okay this requires some kind of a you know deeper uh analysis uh, uh, you know evaluation of what what's going on sixth conversation is actually figuring out what the exact problem is okay and then you say i could probably solve it with saas are you willing to you know pay for it so the seventh conversation is where you say you know what i will build it do you want to put some money down and i will give you the software for free like forever you have mm-hmm. to put in you know maybe like in indian currency i would say are you cool on putting down a lakh you know uh, i will give you 10% equity you will get the software forever yeah. and i and you know if that works out it you know like i'll be able to make money and you'll keep making a 10% equity in perpetuity perpetuity okay yeah. so there are many ways to structure those conversations but uh, to answer your question it starts with conversations and then it go- gets into deals and all of that that we'll talk about you know as see, this is why i said just in time convers uh, just in time knowledge versus just in case knowledge right mm-hmm. now this is just in case knowledge for you you're right. not yet there so you will i will if i teach you all of this right now when you come to that position you'll again come and ask me hey pramod can you can we go over what we spoke about that day okay got it so that is just in time knowledge so what we want is just in time knowledge now we are, this what we have is just in time knowledge 
go look at ideas and when you come to that i will be there to help you figure out how to have those conversations but does that answer your question basically yeah. it's conversations got it yeah yes from on that okay and it's it, see one thing i'll tell you uh, i think we're uh, about time are you cool right. or do we need to no no i'm uh, fine i'm fine okay yeah I, i'll i'll probably end with this i can't believe we still took one hour man <laughs> this is great i love it okay um when you probably heard of this when you when you start up okay you have to do non scalable things okay mm-hmm. and you have to do it again and again and it, and it hurts me because i'm a process guy okay? okay but when you do startups you have to do non scalable things what do i mean you have to go to that damn networking event you have to go you know uh, do uh, like go to this person's office sit down and talk, talk. you have to talk to each of your customers separately like you can't just send them a survey right i wish i could send them a survey you have to do non scalable things for example i think there's an opportunity in saas education okay or uh, there's an opportunity for a niche saas education which is helping non technical people build saas using low code and that's what i'm evaluating here i'm having a one on one conversation with you every day for 3 weeks 1 hour okay this is not scalable i cannot teach a million people this way right? right but i'm doing it right now because this is how you get you figure out what exactly your product should be mm-hmm. okay so get into that mindset from day one that you have to do the non scalable hard work okay right. and then if you do that right for the next 20 years you can sit back and do nothing and and people opportunities will come to you okay but that first few days few months few years you will have to struggle there's no and i and i call that the entrepreneur's debt i i've sent an email did you get that email uh, probably not no okay. no 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 i i sent it as part of the you know like when you previous when, yeah when okay. it's it's an automated email so i'll send it to you if possible today it's okay. called the entrepreneur's debt every entrepreneur has to pay that debt that is the law like like there's a law of gravity there's a law of entrepreneurship you have to pay the debt which is doing the unscalable hard work you don't do that you don't get your rewards okay now if you found this video helpful and you're a non technical person who wants to build their own saas become a founder be your own boss and change your life check out the links to the full course in the video description this course was designed to help non technical people just like you skip years of learning and get to success sooner so go ahead click on that link and i'll see you on the inside